Hey guys, this is Oracle Daphne. My name is Beth and I am back again doing your March 2016 monthly tarot horoscopes. This is for everyone with their ascendant sun or moon in the lovely crabby pants cancer. Anyways, uh, my update is that I got sick in February and so I am behind on my recording schedule and I had intended to get out the mid-February readings, I, I did. I wasn't able to, and chances are I won't be able to get to the mid-March readings as well. Um, so I really have come to the conclusion that I, I don't really feel like really like the drive or the necessity to do mids very much um, as much as I used to. So they're going to be kind of a rarity. Um, the sex and relationships videos, I had also intended to do those for March. I'm not sure if. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing those or if I'm going to be bringing those back more often. It's really right now just as much as I am doing recording as much as I can. And, um, oops, there's a bug. Uh, at some point, um, you know, it'll become more consistent. But right now, what's consistent is, and this is what I intend to do, which is do it, continue to do the monthly readings um, every month. And I'm going to be posting around the, the first, second, or third of the month. Um, and those will be available. These general readings will be available to everyone. So, um, you know, just like they were before, and that's going to be ongoing and continuous. Um, if I do more sex and relationship videos, those will be for rental only, like I did before. And, um, I feel really good about that. So anyways, without further ado, I have been shuffling. And again, this is for everyone with their sun and sun or moon in Leo for the month of March, 2016. Um, just so you guys know, um, you know, the way to schedule with me is not to uh, post a comment on the calendar page. You need to email me, okay? If you want a private reading, you need to email me and say, hey, Elizabeth, I see that, you know, your, uh, you know, March, you know, second uh, day availability is um, six o'clock. You know, I want that spot. Is it still available? And I'll say, yes, let me send you an invoice and then just call me or Skype if you're international. So, um make sure you're emailing me. My email is Elizabeth Olson 31 at Gmail and it's O L S O N. Um, just for those of you who are, you know, uh, questioning the spelling, uh, it's not O L S E N it's O N. Uh, just so you know. Um, okay. So I am recording these on a different day than I did the first batch and <sighs> I want to say, I'm not sure if Pisces got this. I think it was Pisces. You may be in a relationship with a Cancer. Uh, you know, may, sorry, you may be in a relationship with a Pisces Cancer. That's what I was saying. So it could be a Cancer Pisces combination. Um, could also be a Pisces Aquarius. Did I say Pisces Aquarius? Cancer Aquarius or Cancer Capricorn combination. There's a lot of different signs showing up here. So um, you may just have a lot of people around you. You may work with a lot of people. Um, you may have a business, you know, that works with people. Um, there's just a lot going on, I want to say, for you in March. It's very chaotic, I have to say. The spread is incredibly disjointed, so there's just not much continuity at all. The interesting thing is pretty much every sign has gotten this card and I have shuffled a lot, okay? Um, which is the Page of Swords. And I'm going to start with that. For those of you who are new to my channel, I start in the center. I'm sorry, I, I don't necessarily start in the center. I kind of start wherever I feel like. And um, But today I'm starting in the center. So um, what I call the heartbeat of the reading, you have the Page of Swords. And the Page of Swords is has been coming up for every sign. Don't know why. Very interesting. Um, to me, the Page of Swords to me indicates the end of hardship, the end of a cycle of hardship. So it's interesting because March is the third month and three is a very strong spiritual number. Um, so that could be part of it. It also could just be, you know, where things are improving financially for a lot of people which is good. Um, and this is also a card about separation. Now, I know that there's eclipses going on in March. Um, and so this is 
this could just be part of that energy where, you know, something is getting taken out or you, there's a thing about leaving in a lot of people's lives. Something's leaving, something's going, something's a getting, something's getting eclipsed out. Um, I haven't been focused very much on the eclipses at all. Um, but I do want to say that this card has been showing up for everyone and it could be part of that energy. Okay. The page of swords to me is about, again, being kind of plucked out of the, out of the hardship time in your life or a cycle of, um, hardship coming to an end, uh, via the help of other people, family, friends, or the angels. Okay. This is divine intervention. This is divine guidance. This is, um, being looked after someone being looked after it is one of the ascension cards um so and, and it is it is um linking up with the card in the immediate future which is the 10 of swords so you get the 10 and the page um together the thing is they are opposite, <laughs> they're opposite uh, energies. The Page of Swords is being lifted up, okay? The universe going like this, you know, pulling the, <laughs> the tiger out by the tail, okay? Uh, and the Ten of Swords is this pulling down energy. Um, so you have to be careful, Cancer, about highs and lows. And I have talked to Cancer um, a lot about blood sugar issues, and I have talked to cancer a lot about bipolar issues, and I have talked to cancer a lot about uh, taking care of themselves rather, you know, where they don't um, get burnt out uh, or spread themselves too thin. The problem with this is that the Page of Swords is like your, 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 on a high, okay, it's the high moment, and then you take the nose dive and you go really, really, really low, okay. So to me, they're opposites. Now this is the way they're showing up together, you know, in the spread, like that. So you can see they're really, really different. Um, it may just be some things are improving in the beginning of March, and then. What you think is an improvement is not. Um, some of you, there's a fear about falling in love, or some of you may be falling in love or thinking that you're falling in love because it is linking up with the lover's card. And you do have the lover's card in the position of your attitude later down the line, okay? So I usually think of this as falling in love, okay? However, um, the outcome is an absolute no. It's re getting rejected. It's about someone rejecting you. This is the hard rejection. This is not the easy rejection. The easy rejection would be the Two of Swords and the Upright. The Two of Swords in reverse is a rejection that is painful because someone actually has to push you away in order to get you to understand that the relationship's over. So they have to get, they have to, this is someone who lashes out at you and says, get away from me, don't ever talk to me again. Like, like harsh, you know? You may be saying that to someone, um, but because you have the lovers in the position of your uh, attitude, I'm gonna say you want love and you see potential with someone, but they don't see it with you and you won't let it go. The outcome is an absolute no. So whoever you think you're falling for in March, I'm going to tell you, chances are it would behoove you to move on from this, for, to move on from this person. Um, it would behoove you to um, recognize that it's not going to go anywhere and, and move on. It is pulling you down too. I feel like it's pulling you down in a negative way, okay? Um, I feel like it's your belief. There's a belief and there's a wish too because you have, it's sort of like, <sighs> Okay, again, there's a strong Pisces energy, so you know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I did this, I did this for Pisces, but I'm going to blow some bubbles for you, Cancer, too, because I was blowing some bubbles for Pisces, and I'm going to do a little hashtag blowing bubbles for Cancer, which is you living in the dream world, okay? This is the dream. This is the magic fairy tale belief system. 
that, um, you know, the prince is going to come into your life and has come into your life and, and you're going to live happily ever after, you know, and this prince is a dickwad. Okay. He's a horse shit person. Okay. He sucks fucking ass and you refuse to let him go. And that's okay because, um, you're living in the dreamland. Okay. The, the magic, the magic theory, theory dust unicorns land. Okay. Now there's nothing wrong per se about living in, you know, this la la land. Everybody has to go through their own things in life. Okay. I'm getting this stuff all over here, but that's, that's all right. It's fun to do this. Actually. I really enjoy doing this. You can tell I, I really am. And some of you are going, what the hell is she doing? But you know what? Yeah. You know, sometimes, sometimes you just have to let, let loose and, and blow some bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like here to burst your bubble and tell you <laughs> that this person that you're into is a no go. Okay. This person that you're into is a wish is a dream. You're living the dream, you know, and not the reality. Okay. Which is constant. It's constant for the uh, water signs. Okay. You're wishing. Okay. So normally when I do the, um, normally when I do, to have a wish card, whatever is she, whatever is connected to it, like right above it or even off to the side, that's what you're wishing for. And you're looking for romance. You're wishing for love. You're wishing for all those wonderful, happy, glorious feelings um, that you would have when you're in love, you know, or you're wishing for a strong partnership. But the thing is, I also feel like you're wishing for a person, it's a specific person. You're wishing for something to change or something to be different about either the current partner that you're in or the situation with this person. You may be in love with a married man or woman, okay? I feel very strongly that there's someone that's, and it could be where, you know, I don't feel, like I wanna say I don't feel like the married man or woman is in love with you. I feel like it's not mutual because the two of swords is not connecting. Okay. And in the, in the reverse, it's really not connecting and that's the outcome. And you may be thinking to yourself, everything's going really well. You know, this is a great guy. This is your Mr. Right. Because you have, sorry, I'm sort of cleaning off the cards while I'm talking. You have the Mr. Right crowding you. Okay. So the Mr. Right card is, you know, the guy that you think is, is, is it. Okay. You do also have, and, and the Mr. Right can be, um, to me, any of the earth signs, um, or fire signs, uh, or an Aquarius male. That's what I usually see it as. I usually see it as the Taurus, the Capricorn, the Virgo, um, the Aries, Sagittarius, or Leo. Okay. Um, you know, this may be your current partner um, and you may be in love with someone else. Okay, so you may be married and be in love with someone who's unavailable. Okay, or you may be unavailable. I feel like a lot of you, you're in love, but it's not the reality kind of love. It's the dream love, which is why I was blowing bubbles for you. And I'm going to create a whole hashtag for you, Cancer. Okay, so um, to me... <laughs> You know, you also may have had this Virgo guy in the past. To me, this is a Virgo guy. We may have just been very focused on your career. The King of Pentacles and the Six of Wands together, this is two strong, very strong career cards. Um, together, this is a lot of money being very successful, being very, you know, having a strong foundation, a financial foundation, uh, not being really worried about money. Um, however, the fact is, is that you do have the Six of Pentacles in the distant past. So there may have been at one point in your life a time of big expenses. And this and March may be a time of big expenses. So you need to watch your finances, I want to say, in March. Because again, there's significant polarity here in this reading. There's the King of Pentacles, which is the Midas touch. Um being very successful in career, having, having, you know, worked hard to get where you are and achieved a lot through your own hard work and, and being very successful and having a good amount of money saved up. Okay. This is the nest egg. Okay. But also having a good business sense, you know what I'm saying? So like, you know, 
you know, maybe investing, I, I want to say good investments, making good investments, being very careful and cautious in investments, or just being very focused on investing. You may be like an investment banker or somebody like that, somebody who's like, uh, who or who's worked worked in a bank, okay, or I want to say there's just this element of finance here, very strong financial focus. Um, so some of you may like actually have come from money where, you know, you inherited a lot of money and you invested that money and you've nurtured it and it's grown. Um, you may also just have had a very good job, which has lasted a long time and you've climbed the ladder and or you've just had money coming in, you know, but this at the root of the the tree here of the spread, you have the six of um, pentacles. And the six of pentacles is um, spending a lot of money and it's resentment and it's problems in your marriage because of spending too much. Um, so again, there's this polarity here where to me the six of pentacles is the opposite of the king. The six is where there's there's concerns, um, you know, where maybe your partner's spending a lot of money, you've been spending a lot of money. Um, it is also a legal card. So there may have been some settlement that has had happened in the past and you have some money there. Or there may be like a settlement that's sort of still on the table for someone um, that's watching this and you haven't totally settled it yet. Um, there is money to be had there. I would take it if you have a settlement offer. Um, that's my advice because I feel like what's coming is this crash kind of thing where it's like, you know, the high, you have this, this high, you're on a high, maybe you have some money coming and maybe you did settle or you're going to settle and then there's this loss. The Ten of Swords is the loss. You need to be very careful again in March and I do feel like cancers are cautious and careful. It could just be like, I want to say it could just be where someone's taking you to the cleaners or like this is a divorce from hell um, where, you know, you had some money saved up, but they've taken everything because uh, through the through a lawsuit or through a settlement or something, or you have this fear that you're going to lose money. So there may have been issues in your partnership because of money. There may have been a lawsuit of some kind. Um, there may be some sort of settlement of some kind, or there may, have, may still be some settlement sort of to be worked out. Um, and there's this fear that you're going to lose. Um, the fear that it's it's all going to be turned to shit. And it very well might, might be because despite all this financial stuff and career stuff, you have this, it, to me, this totally two, two different mind frames. One is like an almost obsession with money and and being in a good financial place, which maybe you weren't, maybe you're, you know, you, maybe it's like the kind of thing where you, you've been struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling, and you have an opportunity to settle some, you know, get a settlement and you get a settlement, but for whatever reason you squander it, or for whatever reason you make a bad investment, or for whatever reason you're, you know, you get a divorce, you end up getting a divorce and they take half of it and then there it goes, you know, or something like that. There's a paranoia about losing your money, okay? There's a paranoia and a fear there, I feel like, for some of you. Um, or maybe you're in a marriage and there's been financial issues and you want to get a divorce, but you're afraid that if you do leave or you do separate, that you're not going to have anything. So you've stayed in this marriage or you've stayed in this thing and it's sort of just like everything comes turns to shit and comes crashing down because you can't stay in that um, place of fear. Um, you're having a downward spiral moment. Again, I, I don't know whether it was Pisces or who, whoever it was, there was this downward spiral of fear, okay, going on with them. Um, you're, you're, maybe it was Taurus, so you may be in a relationship with a Taurus. Um, because Tauruses are very financially focused. And the King of Pentacles can often be a Taurus, okay? So Cancer, it may just be like a, it could be a Cancer-Taurus combination here, too. Um, but to me, this is, this is not good. And so like, okay, so despite all this financial focus, you are very much focused on romance. You're focused on, you know, you know, I want to say you maybe have fallen in love with someone who's not your partner and you, you know, but the thing is, is they don't see the potential in the relationship. Um, this person that's not your partner. Okay. So you may be getting out of a marriage and falling in love with someone else, but you're going down the wrong path there because they're not the person that 
you want them to be. And it's not equal. There's this inequality. So there's polarity in this reading as well as inequality. The two of swords is where two people are not on the same page. This is thus, you know, kind of thing where it's just, it's, it's not, you're not matching up. Um, and the queen of swords is what's crossing you actually. Um, so this is a very sharp, harsh, um, energy to yours and it could be a person. Um, You've got the queen, the page, and the ten together um, of swords. And so to me, this is like a little cluster of, of tension. It may not be where this is like a full-blown fight, but this is just like tension, where it's like constantly someone putting the knife in. You know what I'm saying? Constantly using their sword, you know, saying mean things, things that are cutting, things that are, you know, hurtful to you. And it's very easy for you... I want to say to get her um, because, you know, you're just sensitive. Cancer is just sensitive. And, you know, in relationships, you know, you may be kind of just vulnerable. Um, to me, this is like your all your guts are kind of hanging out and someone is really, really going in for the kill and it's unnecessary. This is kind of the bloodbath, I want to say. Um, the Red Wedding, you know, from Game of Thrones, which I didn't watch because I just knew that it was just going to be so graphic, so terrible, you know. For those of you who watch Game of Thrones, you know, definitely message me, let me know if, you know, we're accurate here. But um, yeah, this is a bloodbath. Um, this is just not good energy. You know, again, it may just be something that's where where it's like someone says something sort of mean to you and you say something mean back, you know, um, or but it's it's just kind of on the edge of cutting. It's just sort of snide. I want to say snide. Um, it's irritating, okay? I want to say it's irritating. And two people, you might not even be talking to, like, you may be in a partnership where your partner is not even talking to you. Like, not at all. Um, and it may be just one of those crazy things where, um, you know, you're living with someone and you don't talk, you don't communicate. And then when you do, so there's all that tension. And so then when you do talk, I mean, all the swords come out and it's just awful. I don't like the situation, Cancer. This is a situation that needs to, like, something needs to happen here. Something needs to come to a point of, um, I want to say resolution, where things kind of change for the better. Um, again, okay, so this is how I feel. If you're in a Cancer Pisces situation, Cancer, to me, the Cancer Pisces situation is always sort of aching to explode. It's always one of those things. There's too much water and there's just like too much. Like Pisces has a lot of self. They, they need a lot of attention and they need, they have a lot of, they need to work out their own feelings. They're so much that they can't really handle anybody else's. And then Cancer is the person that's kind of gently wanting things to kind of stay, you know, easy so that there isn't any kind of conflict that could hurt their very sensitive feelings and can put up with Pisces only so long because the Pisces teeth, you know, you know, sharks, fish have teeth and will eventually bite, pi bite the cancer and the cancer will just totally lose their mind and it will just explode and the cancer will fight back because the cancer feels like resentful and angry and hateful that the Pisces isn't taking their serious, their feelings seriously. Okay. So it's just a situation. It's this negative situation. If you're in a cancer Pisces combo, this is the, this is a negative situation. Um, there, it may, this may not even be your partner. This could be like your sister, your brother, some kind of relationship it could be your dad. You could have a very tough relationship to your dad. Um, because you do, I did pull the King of Swords, and the King of Swords is a father figure, and sometimes, a lot of times, is a deceased father figure, but it can also be a male father figure um, in your life. That's you know, um, you know, someone that you talk to. So you're, I want to say, you have a very tense relationship. If a lot of you have a very tense relationship to your father, that's what I want to say. Very tense, um, and you may get into arguments with him constantly. Okay. 
or again, the cancer has very sensitive feelings, but will be kind of calming and gently, you know, talked and understanding of the Pisces. But when they get into a fight and when they do an argument, the, the problem is the Pisces can't handle the Cancer's emotions because they can't handle their own. So they don't ever really address the Cancer's emotions and it pisses the Cancer off. And the Cancer eventually gets to that breaking point, like I said, where they can't handle it anymore that the Pisces is not understanding or not or being kind of insensitive. It's weird for Pisces to sound insensitive, but when the Cancer... The Cancer is like, in a way, the Cancer has a tough shell. So the Cancer puts up with a lot, a lot of times. And then they get to this kind of breaking point. Um, that's kind of how I see it. It's just kind of a breaking point. So, and this has come up a lot, I feel like, with the other signs. I feel like maybe it's the eclipse thing that's going on. Um, I've said the words breaking point a lot, and I don't normally say those words. I don't know why. Maybe it's in the collective, you know, subconscious or whatever. Um, you do need to move on from this. Um, I pulled two cards, and one of them is um, the Eight of Cups. Um, and it was in reverse, but I'm going to show you in the upright position. This is the Eight of Cups moving on. In reverse, it's a place of harmony. It's a place of peace. So if there's been fighting, you need to get to a place of peace with it. Um, and not and not push forward. If you're pushing for a person who's in another relationship, or you're pushing for, or someone's pushing to be in a relationship with you, and you're in another relationship, and this is where you don't push forward doing that same thing. You move on. Um, to me, the Eight of Cups is about moving on. It's about not having so much trouble and troubled emotions. It's like it's coming to that place of of peace and understanding. Um, and you also have the Nine of Pentacles, which is coming into your own power. Um, and I think it actually came out in reverse. Um, this is the card of, this is the maybe card. It's one of the only maybe cards I have in the deck. And it's a maybe card because um, there's like a dark cloud kind of hanging over your head. There's something that's like unresolved. There's some energy that's sort of just clinging on to you. And it may, to me, it may be through work. I want to say for some of you, there's conflict at work because there's a lot of work cards. So I feel like there could be conflict and tension at work, conflict and tension within your partnership, or there was conflict and tension with, you know, resentment and stuff, specifically about money in the past. And then there's this feeling of just feeling like exhausted and drained and tired of the same old bullshit. Tired of, um, tired of the negativity. I just want to say you're tired of the negativity. You may just be in a relationship with a negative partner and that partner you're absorbing all this, this, this tension. There's just tension. Um, and it's just not healthy. Um, and... <laughs> Um, this is the Four of Cups card, which is all about the the bubbles, okay? Living in that bubble. You can see it's sort of just like she's living in her own, this the pie in the sky. She's dreaming. She's living in her own little land, okay? And this is you, where you are emotionally. This is, in a way, this is mild depression, which isn't unusual for cancer, but I want to say it's important for you to... I guess I just want to say it's important for you to reconnect with others in a positive way, um, because in, in the in the for this to be in the, the emotions, I mean, you're disconnected. This is a card of disconnect. So you're disconnected from reality in some way. Again, the reality is different. Your life, you're not seeing it very clearly. Okay, you're looking at it through. It's almost like. You're in like a submarine, okay? <laughs> you're in a yellow submarine. You've got one of those little periscopes and you're looking at the world and you're like, nope, and I'm going back down and I'm going to stay in my submarine and I'm just nice and cozy down here in the submarine, okay? And that's the energy um, where you are emotionally. You're like, I don't really want to deal with it, so I'm just going to go back to doing and ignoring and doing what I did. Now, the two of swords as the outcome can be ignoring somebody for very, very, very long time. This is like where you're not talking at all. 
Um, and you need to, I want to say reconcile. There need, There's some kind of reconciliation that needs to happen. Um, there is some peace that you need to make with the situation. There is some things that are like loose ends that you need to tie up. To me, this is about letting go as much as, as it is connecting with somebody else. So again, it's a very polarized reading. It's where it's like, you need to connect with people in a positive way and have positive emotions and be happy, okay? And at the same time, you need to disconnect from people that are negative by getting out of a relationship, physically leaving, okay? Physically leaving, I wanna say, and as well as emotionally leaving. Because right now, you're emotionally, you're checked out. Check, done, raise your hand if you checked out of your relationship. Chances are you checked out a long time ago, okay? Long, 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 long time. I want to say 20 years for some of you. Some of you have been checked out for too long, okay? And this checking out is not helping you in your life, okay? Because if you're checked out of the relationship, it's taking up your focus. You are like, you know what? She is like looking into this pool in her reflection, and she is like, it's like she's absorbed. She's absorbed in her own little mind and her own land, and, and she's... She's in that space of like of get, breaking up with someone or after breaking up with someone or even divorcing someone where there's just like no, like not understanding, there's confusion, there's just like, it's almost like, to me, this is what I call the black hand of emotional death, okay? And the two, the four of cups in the position of emotions with the dark cloud hanging over your head, the nine of pentacles, is... To me, um, um, just feeling like, um, in a way, in a state of shock, it's like the adrenal thing. It's an adrenal response, actually. It's like your, what your body goes through after you've broken up with someone, and it's like you can't think about anything else. It's just all you can think about is the breakup. All you can think about is the stress. To me, this is stress, okay? It equals stress. You know, you may want to call it something else. I used to call it the black hand of emotional death, which was like a, it's almost like this intense negative energy that kind of paralyzes you and it kind of holds you prisoner and you can't move on from it because it's something that you just, you need to process and your body is in like in that state of adrenal shock. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're, you're arguing with someone, you can go, you know, into a state of shock afterwards because it's just so intense. Um, there is an intensity here, a negativity here that, um, you would do, you would do well to move on from. Okay. If you're in the same old pattern, the same old cycle too, financially, where it's like everything you get, you lose. Um, to me, you need to work on your financial feng shui. Okay. And you need to, um, kind of get into the flow. Um, any loss though that I want to say, because you have the uh, eight of cups in reverse, is you completing karma. So you need to let it go, okay? If there's been any loss, if you have like, let's just say, let's just say you have a settlement on the table or you have someone who's trying to divorce you but you're unwilling to let it go. You need to sign the papers and let it go. Um, don't cling on to it. If you're, if you're trying to, you know, uh, fix a situation that's been broken for a hundred years, it's time to let that go too. Recognize it's, it's, it's a karmic thing. You need to learn, learn from it and move on. Any kind of loss that you have suffered, I want to see whether it's financial loss, heartbreak, relationship, any loss has been a karmic thing where you're completing your karma and you're moving to the next level. So don't hang on. Just let it go and move on from it, emotionally move on from it, and start to make better changes in your life um, and better choices too. So um, there's a lot for this reading. <laughs> I definitely recommend a private reading if you haven't had one with me already. Um, feel free to check out my website, oracledaphne.com. Um, that's all that I have for you right now today. <laughs> this is kind of a lot, um, but I send you big hugs like I always do. Big hugs. Big kisses. And I will talk to you guys again soon. And I wish you guys all the best. Okay, take care.
Bye.